What's up, y'all? And welcome to NCC Kids Online! I am so pumped up because we are in week two of Press Play Get In The Mix. But before we go anywhere else, let's start our service like we always do with our North Point Declaration! Wow! All right, now put your hand over your heart and say it with me. I am a child of God. I am loved, adored, and accepted by my Father in heaven. I am forgiven and free. Sin has no hold on me. I am an overcomer, more than a conqueror, full of the Spirit of God, and I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Holy Spirit, open up my eyes to see, my ears to hear, my mind to understand, and my heart to receive everything that God has for me today. In Jesus' name, amen! Now let's kick it off to worship. My check. One, two, one, two. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Are y'all ready? Yeah. Y'all ready? Yeah. Press play! We know we belong here because of your love from us that goes on and on forever. Jesus, we know you are with us wherever we go. You're there, we'll always be together. So sing along with me. We know we belong here because of your love for us that goes on and on forever. Jesus, we know you are with us wherever we go. You're there, we'll always be together. So sing along with me for all the joy he brings. It's going down. Get in the mix. We're not stopping. Get in the mix. to get in the mix clap your hands like this have confidence to get in the mix now clap your hands like this have confidence to get in the mix now clap your hands like this everybody get in the mix we're not stopping the party's hopping get in the mix everybody say Hey kids, my name's Jennifer, and I'm here to go over the bottom line with you. Are you ready? Today's bottom line is, God's plan is the best plan. All right, you wanna say it with me this time? How about if we whisper it, quietest voices, okay? All right, why don't you repeat the bottom line with me? God's plan is the best plan. Hey, great job, I didn't even hear you at all. All right, now let's go over our Bible verse for today. Today's Bible verse comes from Psalm 27, 13. And it says, here is something I am still sure of. I will see the Lord's goodness 
while I'm still alive. All right, you guys wanna say it with me? All right, Psalm 27, 13. Here is something I am still sure of. I will see the Lord's goodness while I'm still alive. All right, great job, guys. Let's go see what's next. Hey guys, do you remember this month's house habit? It's we grow intentionally. Come on, what do you think I'm doing? I'm exercising, right? Exercising is good for your body. You know how we exercise to make our spirit strong? We do what God's word says. The Bible says be kind to one another. So when you practice being kind to people, you're exercising muscles, spiritual muscles. So I wanna challenge you this week, be kind and you will grow intentionally. You're the best around. Not gonna feel too good to do. Hey everybody, my name is Graham and today I'm following in the groundbreaking footsteps of my ancestors. I'm making a mixtape. You see, back in olden times, when someone wanted to listen to music, they needed one of these cassette tapes. And if you were fortunate enough to have one of these dual cassette recorders with high-speed dubbing, you could put up to 90 minutes of your favorite songs onto one rad mixtape. I'm making this mixtape for my friend Erica, who's been running a lot of 5Ks lately. The Eye of the Tiger. And I'm only picking super encouraging songs, that way Erica will have confidence. Confidence is learning to see yourself the way God sees you. Now, I know what you're thinking. Wouldn't it be simpler just to make a playlist that Erica could listen to on her phone? Maybe, but this is all a part of the plan. My plan is to give this mixtape to Erica so she can listen to it while she's running. She probably doesn't have a tape player, so, so she'll borrow mine. And if she carries this thing around with her everywhere, she'll build up arm strength. Oh, I didn't say it was a good plan. Oh man. Another one bites the dust. Sometimes plans don't work out the way you expect. But as you'll see in today's story, sometimes there's a bigger and better plan. Oh, gotta switch to side two, I guess. How did people even survive back then? The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Joshua, chapters five and six. For 40 years, God's people wandered the desert. At last, they reached the land that God had promised them. Joshua led them to the edge of the rushing Jordan River. The priests will carry the Ark of the Lord. The Ark was a beautiful chest that reminded the Israelites that God was with them. As soon as the priests step into the Jordan, it will stop flowing. Sure enough, as soon as the foot of the first priest touched the edge of the river, the waters parted. God's people crossed on dry land, just as God had led them through the Red Sea 40 years before. God did this so that all the nations on earth would know that he is powerful. Soon after, the Amorites and Canaanites living in the land had heard what God had done. Fearful, they retreated back to their towns, including the high-walled city of Jericho. Oh, great. Like, how do we fight them now? God will show us the way. That evening, Joshua left camp and snuck toward Jericho. The walls loomed impossibly strong. So tall. As he turned, Joshua saw a man standing nearby holding a sword. Who are you? Uh, are you on our side or the side of our enemies? I have come as the commander of the Lord's army. Joshua knelt down face to the ground. What message does my Lord have for me? Take off your sandals. The place you are on is holy ground. Joshua tugged off his shoes. I have handed Jericho over to you. Joshua listened carefully as the Lord delivered a message. 
a battle plan unlike any other. Wow. Uh, okay, uh, we'll do it, Lord. Joshua called for the priests. Get the Ark of the Covenant, and I need seven of you to march in front of the Ark with trumpets. Sorry, just warming up. <laughs> Joshua gathered the army too. Time to move out. <laughs> like, do we get to attack now? March around the city. Just like go in circles? Some of you march ahead of the Ark of the Lord and the rest of you march behind. Can we at least shout and stuff? Hey, Jericho, you guys smell like cheese. Don't give a war cry or raise your voices until the day I tell you to shout. But the priests must blow their trumpets. Forward, march. The entire army, including the priests, marched one time around Jericho, just as the Lord had instructed Joshua. Now can we get them? Back to camp, men. We march again tomorrow. The next morning, the Israelites marched around the city once again. And then on day three, once again on day four, not to mention day five, and once again on day six. We march again at sunrise. Uh, I have blisters. At dawn on the seventh day, the army and priests formed their strange parade once more. But this time, once they finished marching around the city one time, Joshua called out. Keep marching. Again? My feet are killing me. The Lord has told me we must march around the city seven times today. On the seventh time around, the priests blew a long blast on their trumpets. Now shout! The Lord has given you the city. Oh, 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 yes. oh, oh, oh. As the shouts of the Israelites rang out in the clear morning air, something incredible happened. The massive walls of Jericho began to tremble. The gates shivered and quaked. Jagged cracks ran through the heavy stones. Rocks began to tumble from the tops of the walls. Little rocks, large stones, giant boulders, until at last the walls collapsed, crashing in on themselves. The ground quaked and plumes of dust burst into the air. As the air cleared, the Israelites stared in amazement. The city of Jericho stood wide open. Take the city! With nothing standing in their way, the Israelites charged right in. That day, they completely defeated the city of Jericho. God was with Joshua, and he became well known everywhere in the land. When God told Joshua to take over the city of Jericho, Joshua probably thought of a battle plan. And I bet his battle plan didn't involve marching around the city wall for a week blowing trumpets. But Joshua followed God, and the Israelites took the city. He had confidence that God's plan was bigger and better. And that's not the only time God proved his plan was better. When Jesus, God's son, died on the cross, Jesus' disciples had to wonder, what is God thinking? Then in three days, when Jesus came back to life, it all became clear. God's plan is always better. The truth is, none of us know what the future holds. Your family might have to move out of the neighborhood or out of the state. You might get sick or break a bone. You might not get put on the team you tried out for. But when things don't go according to your plan, that's when you need to remind yourself, God's got you. You may not always know what God's plan is, but keep following him and have confidence that his plan is bigger and better. That's the one thing to remember today. God's plan is the best plan. My plan to make a mixtape for Erica is not the best plan. But it's still a lot of fun. Ah, oh. Oh no, it's unraveled. Oh wait, no worries. I've got an idea. Huh? Just like my ancestors. I'll see you next time. Well, that's all we have for today, kids. But before you head out, don't forget to follow our Facebook and Instagram so that you can keep up with whatever is happening at NCC Kids. And don't forget, go to our website so that you can download the worksheet for today's lesson. All right, we'll see you at week three of Press Play! What? Q.
cute piano music? Okay. Wow! <laughs>